Welcome to TOCON. TOCON is a revolutionary new slave control system from Exide that uses intuitive, HUD-based controls to make controlling a slave easy and fun. This video tutorial focuses on the access and permission system within TOCON, which determines who can do what to a slave. TOCON uses an advanced system to control access to the slave that is based upon the concept of roles and permissions. Simply put, a role determines who you are with respect to the slave, for example, their owner. The permissions for your particular role determine what you can do to that slave. Let's talk about the roles first. There are four roles. Owners, guests, everyone else, and the slave. The slave is the easiest role to understand. They're the ones who are being controlled. It's important to note the other slaves don't fall into this category. The role is reserved specifically for the individual slave wearing the hood. Owners are people who own or have primary control over the slave. Master or mistress, dominance, whatever your preferred name is, the slave is their property. Guests are designed to be temporary owners. They have some or all of the permissions of a real owner, but they have their own set of permissions. And everyone else is, well, everyone else who doesn't fall into the other three categories. Let's take a look at the slave HUD. When I select the Owners button from the home page, it takes me to the Owners and Access page. The right side of the screen contains up to 12 different owners and guests listed individually by name. The guests are in gray and the owners are in black. This is pretty easy to understand, and if you only ever need to worry about a small group of owners or guests, this covers those needs nicely. But what if you're in an environment where you want more than 12 people to control the slave? Or you want people to be able to control the slave without having to first add them to a list? That's where the two checkboxes on the left come into play. If you check off the first one, Allow Group Access, Anyone wearing the same group tag as the slave will be treated as a guest owner. For example, a role play sim might create a group called Town Citizens. It would invite the town slaves and trusted citizens into this group. If a slave activated that group and allow group access was checked, then everybody wearing the same group tag would be able to access the slave as a guest owner. The second checkbox allows anyone at all to access the slave every single person on the Second Life grid. It's kind of scary. The risk this presents can be controlled via the permission system, so let's talk about that next. As we have seen, people who access a slave fall into four categories, owner, guest, everyone else, and the slave themselves. Let's enter the permission screen, which is available on the slave HUD through the owner's button on the home page. If you're using the Owner's HUD, you can find the Permission button on the control panel once you have targeted a slave. The Permissions page is actually several different pages full of descriptions on the left side and four columns of checkboxes on the right. There are a lot of permissions. You can see them by clicking the black arrows under the columns on the right to flip through all of the pages. The left side of the screen describes actions a person can perform on the slave for example, suspension or ball and chain. On the right, you'll see four checkboxes for that action, one for each role. Let's take the ball and chain for example. This line controls who can attach a ball and chain to the slave. The first box if checked means the owner can do it. The second box if checked means the guest can attach the ball and chain. This includes any guests in the access list or anyone in the slaves group if the allow group access button is pressed on the previous screen. The third box only matters if allow open access is checked on the previous screen. If it is, and this box is checked, anyone on the grid can attach a ball and chain. The fourth box indicates whether this slave can attach a ball and chain to him or herself. As you can see, this system of individual permissions can provide an incredible amount of control. You can turn on open access, which allows anyone on the grid to control the slave, but then limit them to only be able to do a few chosen things. You can use a group to open the access to the slave to trusted citizens, but then stop them from accessing critical parts of the TOCON system, such as adding an owner or changing permissions. When combined, 
The roles and permissions in Tokon provide the ability to determine who can do what to a slave. These abilities can be found in every Tokon HUD and also on the web-based control panel. We hope this tutorial has helped you to understand our access and permission system. Thanks for watching and be sure to catch our other tutorials to learn more about the Tokon system.